I've played Guild Wars 2 for over 20,000 hours, and I've learned a whole lot and collected just about everything in the game, so it's a perfect time to go round again. Join me in the adventures of my completely fresh account known only as the Microtransaction Enjoyer on the quest of obtaining and unlocking everything in the game, from legendary gear and mounts to living world story episodes, maps, and ultimate gem store quality of life, purely through efficient and somewhat sensible gameplay. No real money required. Waypoints are unlocked uh, for accounts. I don't mind exploration, actually. You, you know what's really weird? This is so weird, guys. Um, and this kind of confirms it. This is such a fascinating topic of convenience. Guys, I'm enjoying the game more when I don't have quality of life. It's not a joke. This game, I'm, I'm having more fun now without all of the quality of life that I have on my main account. Right? Um, specifically, mounts and... Be having to actually use the terrain and play the terrain. It, it's more fun to me. I prefer it. It's a very, very interesting meme. We can actually salvage some of these rares, actually, with our Mystic Salvage Kit. Get a few Ectos on the board here. Wow. Not exactly high rolling there, but unlucky. I think inconvenience is actually fun. That's the thing. I think it's actually fun to play, right? Do you think we can actually kill this Corrupted Mower? How much health does it have? I think it's a champion, right? Let's get this champ- oh yeah, okay, here we go. Corrupted Mower. It's got Scorcher and Exploiter. Okay, so we have to tag up front. Oh yeah, we can definitely kill this. We can take it down, no problem. Definitely want to get our CC bar here. We should have some allies or ashes is great. Oh, it's actually pretty tanky. Uh, yeah, I think we're looking good. Ooh, that's not good actually. We have some roleplay segments. Ah, oh, the timer stopped though actually. So during the roleplay segment, the timer is gone. That's good. Come back. Dude, it's like, it's covering me in oil. What the hell? Ah, run! Resistance to counter the disgusting oil. This is not good. This is not good. Yep. Oh, you get more time every time you uh, get over it. That's kind of crazy. Corrupted mower. Easy kill. Easiest corrupted mower of my life. I love to see it. What's your DPS? I think it'll be surprisingly decent, actually. I haven't got the best gear yet. I haven't got good runes and sigils, but we're getting 11k burn ticks, like 12k burn ticks for a good chunk of time here. Probably doing decent damage. Not horrible, anyway. Perma days. There you go. One more run back up there. Let's get down to business. Okay. Get some taunt going. Get our final CC, and the corrupted mower will fall. We have a banner warrior here, so we have like insane quickness up time. Omega quickness. Very nice. Good job, gamers. The mower is down. All right, so now we've got to go do some of these uh, red events here. Slight surge. I'm actually just going to grab that waypoint thing because it's so close. Pursue the gangs to the junkyard. So this guy, we got to kill. You know, I actually didn't know this for a while, but you actually have to kill these two at the same time. It's a fun fact for you. Otherwise, they actually revive. They get back up. So watch out for that one. But it usually happens just automatically. People just kind of kill them. You can actually stack them too, actually. They are stackable. And you can kill them both even better. But no one ever does that. It's the advanced technique, you know? The advanced tech is unknown. We did it. We're in. This event is a legendary event. Are you guys ready for an epic a truly epic adventure? Oh, you better be. You, you better be extremely ready for this one. Because this is going to teach you about line of sight and not getting smushed by a giant golem. A lot of the uh, normal attacks here are not really a threat. You can just basically eat all of these, right? Nothing really much happens here. But as we progress through this fight, Things are going to start happening, right? Attacks will start happening. And there's one in particular. He will clap down. We have to hide behind some rubbish, basically. Some trash. In order to not get one shot. But broadly speaking, this thing here, it pulls you in. Don't get sucked in. Just use your keyboard. Try not to stand in the mines. And just move on. Oh, this is actually real. Yeah, this is kind of inconvenient, isn't it? Like, I have to go all the way around now. Because, yeah, yeah, I don't have a, I don't have the, I don't have the Jade Bot. I can't go up. Tragic. It's okay, though. We can go this way. And here we go. And every phase here, we just get a few more attacks. A few more attacks. 
A little bit more gaming. Prepare for the clap of death. Now we have some turrets firing at us, which is very exciting, obviously. They don't actually do too much, though. They hit actually a little bit hard. You can see that people are taking a bit of pressure. But you can also see that we have a lot of just group healing. In open world, you typically do want a few healers, but not that many, right? Like, healing will overflow to basically all players, even if they aren't in the squad, uh, just by blasting enough healing. So you can just go really hard. And just mostly play damage. That's why a lot of the builds I'd recommend to new players are actually offensive support builds. Because here's the thing. Um, the really key thing about being able to do damage and survive in Guild Wars 2 is actually boons. Using boons well. Um, and even if you want to do like maximum damage, a lot of the time you're going to actually want to try and get as many boons as you can to make your character really effective. So the key here is playing essentially a hybrid build, right? Like the, the ideal builds for new players are hybrid builds because they can heal themselves a little bit a lot of the time. They can give boons to make themselves do more damage. They can do solo damage on their own so you can solo stuff really easily. Um, and they often have like a little bit of survivability packaged in as well, which is really good. Again, if you're kind of playing solo or if you're in a, you know, a big event. Because these events, um, they, they don't always hit super hard, but there are actually a lot of bosses that hit really hard. And having the ability to heal yourself or have some mitigation or some way to deal with that is actually really important. A really, really important thing. And in we go. This is, look, yeah, they, look, the commander is aware. The commander knows that the, cre the, the clap is happening. So you can see now, there's dropping down a bunch of trash here. Then we have to hide behind a trash pile. Oh, this could be brutal. Are you, watch this, watch this. Oh, it actually didn't get that many hits. Usually a lot more people die than that. But actually not that many people got hit by the devastating clap attack from Prototype XJ1. Good job, team. Good survivals. And obviously if you die, you have to run all the way back. Classic mistake, by the way, that a lot of people make. Look, look at this game. Golden Ampra making a classic error. A lot of the time... Players who um, who die, they actually won't uh, respawn, right? You should always do this. Respawn immediately. Because that means you can get back into the action and start contributing to the fight immediately, as quick as possible. You don't want to be AFKing. You want to be in, ready to go, contributing and doing some big DPS. Hit that respawn button and let's fucking go, you know? It's huge. Prototype XJ1, about to fall though. We might get one more trash pile here. Because the next phase is going to be at 30%. The final phase actually adds like a giant laser beam. But weirdly enough, the giant laser beam is actually not that scary. I think everyone's surviving the clap pretty well. Right? Yeah, I mean, there are a few people got walloped here. But wow, this is a good squad. A good squad of gamers who know how they... They've got a keyboard plugged in. Ready to rumble. Ah, uh, here we go. I like that the comm is leading. The comm is actually yelling at people. Telling people to get uh, get away from the clap. Oh, it is going to, yeah. It's very wide this time. As you can see, the positions are a bit random. So it might catch a few people. It did catch a few extra people there. Not that many more people, though. Now we have the laser beam. Here we go. But actually, doing a good job here, huh? Look at that. Isn't that just great, guys? We're so good at this game. Functional, wholesome, powerful squad. I love to see it. I love to see it. Insane. We're going to get the kill now. Junk pile again? Uh-oh. Run! Going to get a purging flames. Cheeky purging flames. Around the line of sight spot. And we finish the job. Watch out for the laser beam. He always does it after the clap. And we are done. We are done. I think Jade Runestone is actually better than uh, Amalgamated Gemstone right now, right? I think it is. Anyway. Or at least it's very comparable. Oh, it's actually maybe not quite as good as Amalgamated Gemstones, but it's still very decent. Okay. And now it's time for the big one. We are going to Dragon's End. Okay. Let's see if we can get ourselves into a map here for Dragon's End. DE Meta. Can we get in? That was full? Okay, right. We might have to make it work here. We actually have a few people joining. I can't, I wish I, I actually can't tag yet because I don't have a commander tag. I can only do a raid squad, which is kind of no good, right? But we are actually filling this map as long as someone can tag up. Okay, here we go. Squad. If, okay, hang on a minute. Map. 
Someone tag go go. I can organize subgroups and manage the squad. Okay, tag us up and put it on LFG. Ah, great. We actually have our victim. Very good. We are tagged. All right, LFG us. Gamers, get in here. And while we're doing this, I think we can kind of... I, I want to talk about this in a bit more depth, actually, but we can kind of go over, like, what we're going to be looking for here uh, in terms of what we're doing. In fact, I can actually just show you a tool. Let's see if it's actually working right now because we're doing some uh, we're doing some heavy development work on um, the team builder. Uh, yeah, we actually have it. So basically, what we're going to be looking for in our subgroups, we're going to be looking for a source of quickness, a source of alacrity, and a source of might in each group. Usually protection as well. That's kind of like, these are like the four like mega boons. And then fury after that as well. We really want to have fury. So we want alacrity, quickness, might, fury, and protection. Like those five, that's where you want to be looking. Um, and... After that, everything else is a bit of a bonus. You do want to get a little bit more than that. That's generally the way that we actually want to go about doing this. Because that's going to give us the key offensive and defensive capabilities that we need to basically tackle all the content. By the way, coming soon, hardsuck.gg team builder lets you play around with squads and see what all the builds do at a glance too. You can see what all the builds that um, are in the meta right now actually do. Although we haven't actually got that many of them here. We have way more of them soon. You want to see every build and what it does and also how to play it. All right, so we're going to go about doing that. So Firebrand, well, we're playing Firebrand, right? So we give quickness. So I'm just going to put one Firebrand in each group. This is also really nice because Guardian applies a lot of stability, which is really nice. Now, Mechanist applies a lot of alacrity, and so does Spectre. So again, we can kind of put one Mechanist in each of these groups, kind of assuming that they're going to give a bit of alacrity. And we can kind of do a little bit of a... And Scrapper applies quickness, so we're going to put that in its own group. Harbinger applies quickness. We can go ahead and put those in their group. And we can put some more mechanists in uh, like this. And because we're an open world, we don't necessarily know what people are going to play. So we're just going to overcap a little bit. We're going to actually deliberately overkill it. Uh, and put more boons than we technically need into these subgroups. So for example, okay, um, this mechanist might be a DPNS mechanist. So let's just go ahead and put a rev here as well. Let's put a rev here as well, because they this these renegades give alacrity, right? Let's put a mechanist here. Spectres also maybe give alacrity. So let's go ahead and just throw in a few spectres here and there. And if you take this type of approach, what you're going to find is that more often than not, it probably works out pretty okay. Will it be perfect? No. But doing this type of approach is a really good way to guarantee that your squad at least makes a little bit of sense. And after that, we just kind of throw in some DPS. We're going to put guardians where there aren't any guardians, because guardians apply a lot of stability, which is great for open world which means that um, we won't get crowd controlled as much. I'm just going to go ahead and put some guardians in these dragon hunters because they can give some stability and defensive utility to the team. And then everything else is just DPS. We can just go ahead and throw that in there and just kind of throw it about the place and just make sure that we have enough boons. Bear in mind there will be an element of overflow uh, you know, and boons from all over the place. So we can definitely get like a lot of kind of uh, free value there. But that sort of thing, it's probably going to work out okay. And then what we can do here, uh, gamers, okay, talk to, and this is like a really big thing. Seriously, if you do this kind of thing, guys, it is going to change your life. Talk to each other and communicate who is doing quick, alack, heal, etc. Party chat, huge, okay, big value, big social experience okay massive make it work as best as we can doesn't have to be perfect try and give boons okay where possible omega boons omega memes and just kind of that kind of stuff that type of approach will generally work out pretty well uh, we have another guardian here so we can get that in there looks like we're actually going to be a little bit low on alacrity here we're missing an alacrity source which is a bit unfortunate but you know what that happens. Sometimes you're not going to have uh, all the boons. Well, maybe, uh, let's see, this is actually a, this is a DPS mech. So hopefully the Mirage is going to give a lacrity there. You can kind of tell by looking at what skills they have. Um, let's see, we can get a Rev in there. We can do some Scourges in here. Uh, well, you know, Ranger can technically give a lacrity. So let's just get it in there, you know, and then boom. And that, my friends, is a subgroup. Look at that. If there were uh, roll icons. Yeah, but unfortunately that would just be magic, right? Um, there's no way you can do that uh, in the game. Not well anyway. Because you can be a quickness fire, but you can also be DPS. You're going to have to rely on people self-reporting. And that's honestly not a very good estimate 
Um, this is fine. I mean, it's not it's not difficult. It's, it's very easy, right, to do this. And if you go about this, it'll be fine, right? If you if you do this, th there will be so many boons getting spewed out at this point that even though it isn't perfect, it will overcap enough that everyone will end up with decent boons, right? Um, it's it will work out with a setup like this. It just has to be good enough to kind of have critical mass. That's the important thing here. Just gonna open these champion bags. Champion bags are actually quite a good source of early gold as well. You can see that every time we open some of those uh, exotic bags like this, we're getting a little bit of coin, which is quite nice. Pretty nice, huh? We should be cons we should need to we should honestly maybe salvage a lot of the unidentified gear and get luck out because I think increasing our luck is actually a pretty good thing to do. Like having a bit of magic find is certainly gonna help us out a little bit. Not much, but a little bit. And so you can really see that we're building up our rare stack, our stack of unidentified gear. And that's when our real payday is going to be. Because these are each worth about 20 silver or so. So selling that is really nice. Same thing with our green and blue unidentified gears as well. Like, this is the kind of stuff where you get the big payday. We can also just go ahead and salvage our uh, rares here. This will give us some ectoplasm, as you can see there. Salvaging rares in general is worth it. I got a little bit unlucky, so you know there's an RNG element to it, so you might get a few dry streaks and ectos. You can get one to three ectoplasms for salvaging a rare, which usually works out in your favor. But I haven't really had a haven't had a very lucky day today, huh? Okay, good. We have this exotic. Can't sell it though, because I need 21 more hours before I can actually uh, properly play the game. And look at all that damage. We're getting our ass kicked here. Heal. Oh. Firebrand Tome 2. It's so good. It's so good. The dragon is farming us. It's fine. We got him down, though. No problem. Dragon dealt with. Easy. Yeah, make sure your settings are all good and they're all in order. Oh, wow. I was kind of expecting them to be nearly done by now. I think they are nearly done, though. Just going to chill and wait for this to spawn. I, wait, actually, you know I'm not going to go leech. We can actually go and uh, tag the next event. Tag the dragon and get another champ bag. It's champ bag time. Let's roll. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I want to get my get my loot. Give me, give me, give me. All right, got it. Okay. Bag of coins. Boom. Two silver. I'm rich. What's our karma looking like, actually? Karma is somewhat relevant, right? 50k. Not bad. Not bad, not bad. Like, you guys seriously, you guys seriously think that this group will have any issue with Dragon's End. We are going to annihilate Dragon's End. And this is actually something that I really hope to show a little bit um, in in this run, is that there are a huge amount of misconceptions around instance content. There's loads of misinformation about instance content and even about stuff like Dragon's End. It was, look, look how hard it was for me to get a squad. I joined a squad and I organized the subgroups. It took me three minutes. Two minutes to organize the subs. And now we're going to kill Dragon's End. Right? I'm going to get into strike missions. And again, it's going to just be a case of joining the LFG, trying to communicate with people a little bit, and we're going to farm it. It's not going to be a crazy amount of um, time investment. It's not going to be like really hard to do, even on a totally fresh account. And that's just because I have the knowledge. I'm prepared for it. I'm going to carefully approach the content to make sure I succeed. And there's a huge amount of misinformation about this stuff. People say, oh, it's impossible to get into the content. No, it isn't. It absolutely is. You can do it. You can absolutely get into this content. People say, oh, you know, it, it's just, you know, like it, it's, you know, you, Dragon's End fails all the time. No, you can absolutely make it succeed by learning about squad compositions, by tagging up yourself, by trying to get people to use useful skills to conquer the content, right? Yeah, the soundtrack is indeed very good. Good soundtrack. We've got the tunes flowing. Got some wailing going on in the background. Some ethereal wailing. It's great. Let's get in there. Let's boon up. Gonna do a bit of it. I'm, I'm seeing a few people actually a bit low. I'm just gonna heal here a bit. Because I have some time anyway before I can get back to my axe. And I am technically playing a healer build, so I want to be thinking about support. I haven't got my staff yet to kind of uh, fully complete that heal build. But we're getting there. Okay. Ooh. There we go. We got him. A lot of people dying there. Yeah, yeah, this is fine. We're going to easily kill this. Boons are good enough. We got our might. We got quickness. Bit of a lack here and there. It's all good. It's all good. We're actually kind of blasting, you know? We're actually, you know, we're, we're, we're kind of juicing a bit. 
Oh, yeah. We don't have that many people here, though. A lot, it looks like almost everyone went to the other side. Which is, uh... <laughs> it's maybe not ideal. The way they already killed it? Oh, no. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. What are we doing? I think if we... I think we should still be okay. I'm gonna save um, this CC here. I'm gonna pick up the Frostbow and use the fifth skill. 11 seconds. If we get the CC, it should be fine. Not even close. We got it. Good job. Very nice. Easy. No problem. XD. The commander says XD. Very nice. Right, we're in. I actually want to try and pull some of these mobs in. I actually want to get rid of these ads. This is one thing that, as people have stopped tryharding a little bit, um, people have kind of stopped focusing on the ads. This actually might be CC, but it is. Yep, okay. Let's see if we get... Oh, no. Yeah, I should have stepped away from that A-bomb. That's some Harvest Temple CM classic mistake right there, right? We're going to actually use our taunt. Really go all out for this. Are we going to get this? We are good. Very nice. And we should be able to finish the job here. Oh, crispy phase here, guys. Crispy phase. Okay. And that's that phase done. Oh, still 14 minutes on the clock at 40%. So, look, I really want to um, emphasize this, actually. Look how strong it is to have boons, okay? Look, Link, can you link the screenshot again real quick of your Dragon's End running out of time? Because I think it is so important to actually talk about this difference. If you are a new player, boons is where you want to be investing your effort. Boons are how you do damage in open world. It's how you do damage everywhere, pretty much, actually, guys. Oh, nice. We actually got the bug. You can climb up really quickly now. If you have boons, you will farm hard. Look at Linker's uh, group here. Okay, and look. So, basically, this is the boss at 20%. And his group here has, what, a minute left on the timer? Yeah, a minute left on the timer at 20%. We're at 40% with 13 minutes left on the timer, right? That is the difference between having an organized squad that's got some good boon up times and a, you know, a sensible, sensible subgroup setup compared to one that doesn't. This is the kind of thing that's going to make the difference. This is what's going to separate your squad from a winning squad to a failure squad. There you go. That's all I've got to say. Uh, honestly, I kind of like the fact that whenever you get a kill, your Firebrand term gets an extra page. That's kind of fun to use. It means you can kind of keep using your key abilities and keep the chain going, get more pulls off. I know that some some people don't like that change, but I actually kind of like it. Like you, get, you can spam your abilities so hard, actually. It's great. Because you just keep going. You just get more and more pages. It's pretty good. Okay, and now we just need to wait for this. Don't get hit by the giant wave. Oh, look. Yeah, that does, is a bit buggy sometimes, not going to lie. You can get a little bit trolled. Ah, the boss is now going to swap. Oh, interesting. It's actually not rendering. How weird is that? It kind of like the AoE just despawns. You just got to know the telegraph, though. Nice. Classic Guild Wars 2. There are, there are no bugs in Guild Wars, guys. It's like the thing that you need to learn. I'm actually going to not drop out of Tome yet because I want to use a CC on all these Whirlpools. Because we're going to... Oh. We're going to get a few Whirlpools, and we can just use our CC to help break people out. Can shield five these guys. Yeah, people are a bit in Narnia over here, aren't they? But, mm, yeah, they're, they're probably dead. They're probably not surviving that, are they? Yeah, that ain't going to happen. No, just keep blasting. Wait, what, what, the, what are you doing, boss? Did you see that, guys? The boss is just completely having a spasm there, randomly wiggling around. Use some CC on there. Because, ideally, you, you, what you want to do in this kind of situation is you actually just want to use your um, action key, if you if that's up. This actually will be a CC. CC here, go, go. So this is going to be a break bar. And there we go. I'm actually going to pick up the ice bow and just use the fifth skill, because otherwise no one's going to. And we should be able to actually just muscle through this. Because the tail is up now, but it's not really a problem. It's completely ignorable with this uh, defiance, because of this uh, defiance bar. We can just basically muscle through all of it. Shouldn't be too much of a problem. Yep. As you can see here, that exposed basically makes the boss take 100% more damage, which is pretty good, as it turns out. And means you can just skip the tail mechanic. Yes. All right. Oh, nice. These ones are actually going a lot better. Much more efficient. They're all dying at the same time. Lovely. Okay. Now back up, and we're doing our final 20%. 
Yeah, this is going to be a very easy kill, as you can see here. And boons are helping, right? Like, we probably saved at least four minutes from just having better boon distribution and better boon uptime uh, because of the way we had our squad set up. And that's a little bit weird and almost a little unintuitive, but that is basically the name of the game when it comes to Guild Wars 2, right? Uh, Guild Wars 2 is an unusual game in this regard. All right. AoE loot on Intrad. Oh, loot. Oh, yeah. Let's do it. Very nice. Very nice indeed. We love to see that. That is absolutely insane. Now we get all the loot. It's chest time. It's time to pick up all of the chests. Very nice. Let's see. We got our antique summoning stone. Oof. Now we're building up that wealth. 15 memories of Aurene, by the way. That is big. Bunch of exotic gear as well. We can open these little mini chests in the middle. We get our spindrift shield. We can even sell these, right? I don't think I can sell them yet, though. Oh, 20 hours. 20 hours. But yeah. As you can see, we're really starting to get there. We have a lot of valuable items in our inventory here. We got summoning stones, memories of Aurene, Jade Runestone. Even these exotics we're getting here, they're actually 50 silver a pop, which is great. Um, you know, a few things from the festival there. It's a pretty good time. It's a pretty damn good time. Good job. We say good job, gamers. Good job, team. Thai Commander. Very, very good com. Nice. Let's go. And that'll do it for now.